Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the VFO A229 Duo. This is a dual channel dash cam that records both front and rear and offers 2K recording for both dash cams. Uh, I found it to be a pretty solid dash cam. It does the key things that you need and does them well. And it's the product of many years of refinement from VFO. It's essentially an evolution of the A129 Plus Duo, which I've really liked as a solid bang for the buck for a front and rear dash cam. The A229 essentially builds on the A129 Plus and it adds some nice modernized improvements. Now I've been running the A229 in my car for the past three months or so. Uh, and in this video, I wanna go ahead and share my thoughts here in the dash cam. We're gonna go over both the pros and cons of the A229 and ultimately help you decide uh, whether or not this dash cam is right for you. So starting off, one of the big new changes here with the A229 is the fact that it can record 2K for both the front and the rear dash cam. So both dash cams are gonna be capable of recording at 1440p and 30 FPS. Uh, there's no 60 FPS option available with this one, just 30. And I like the fact that they're now stepping up that video quality for the rear dash cam. The previous generation, A129 Plus Duo, did 2K for the front dash cam, but then just 1080p for the rear. Now, if we take a closer look at both dash cams to get a sense of the design improvements, right away you'll notice that VFO has updated the design of both the front dash cams as well as the rear ones. Now, first starting off and taking a look at the two different front cameras, the first thing that I noticed, of course, is the fact that the A229 is now definitely larger than the A129 series dash cams. And VFO says that this is for two primary reasons. Number one, you've got a larger display. Uh, the screen grows from 2 inches to 2.4 inches, uh, which does make the screen easier to read to change settings or playback footage. The second reason is that VFO says this helps with cooling, and if you take a look at both dash cams, you'll notice some additional vents now here uh, in the larger dash cam. And height-wise, it's almost as tall as the Thinkware U1000, another popular dash cam. Now, I was concerned that when I got it mounted in my car, the dash cam might be too big, but once I got it mounted, when I started driving, I didn't actually notice the dash cam anymore, so I don't have any issues with the size, even though it is bigger. Now, on the back of the dash cam, underneath the display, we've got five different status LEDs and then five different buttons to control the dash cam. I like the fact that with the A229, we've got a big uh, emergency record button right here, so in case something important happens on the road, video protected. you can just press that button there, and it's going to save and protect that specific clip. Uh, then moving on to the side of the dash cam, uh, they've now switched over to USB Type-C for power, uh, which I like as a more modern connector, plus it can actually provide a more stable and reliable power supply. Now you can plug the power cable either into the side of the dash cam itself or the way that I've done it here uh, on the top of the uh, GPS mount. Now I prefer this so that if you want to uh, remove the dash cam with a quick release like that, uh, you can just do it right there. Now if you uh, reconnect it, the power is just going to pass directly back into the dash cam itself and then uh, go ahead and power the dash cam back on for you. Now one thing to be aware of is on the other side of the dash cam, you do have the plug-in for the rear facing dash cam. So if you do use the uh, two channel option, disconnecting it here, you're still gonna have the cable sticking out of the other side. Additionally on the side, you've got the slot for the micro SD card. It supports up to a 256 gig card. Uh, and then you've got a port here for an optional external microphone in case you'd like to get a secondary mic closer to somebody inside the car. Now the A229 uses a much thinner coax connector for the rear cam, and it's noticeably thinner than the previous USB cables on the A129 series, uh, which makes them much easier to install and tuck behind your vehicle trim. It's a lot like the connector on the A139, though it's not the exact same cable. Uh, the A139 does use a slightly smaller and thinner cable. Then once you've got the dash cam mounted in your car, the lens itself can tilt up and down uh, to make sure that you've got it aimed nice and straight. Uh, the lens doesn't tilt side to side, uh, just goes up and down. Uh, now the polarizer, if you get that, it's an optional accessory like this. It's a round polarizer, again the same one used for the A139, and it just uh, attaches directly onto the lens like this to help kill some reflections off your windshield while you're driving. I find it to be a very helpful accessory. Uh, and that polarizer design, it is different than the one that's used on the A129 series dash cams. It looks like this, it just kind of clamps down uh, over the lens like that. Next, taking a look at the rear dash cams, a couple important differences to note here. Now, besides the resolution improvement I've already talked about, uh, 1080p here for the previous generation, 1440p or 2K here for the new one, uh, obviously there's a new style design for the rear dash cam as well. Now, the previous generation would attach with double stick tape like this to the rear window. Uh, then you would just angle the lens up or down to get it pointed the way that you would want. Uh, there was also a quick release mount, so if you ever want to remove the rear dash cam, you could do that. Not something I ever did, but it was an option. Additionally, the uh, USB port right here was up on top, which I never really liked because uh, it was kind of a taller rear dash cam, and so to minimize blocking my visibility, I would try to get it up as high as possible, and sometimes that would cause this uh, USB cable to kind of bend in weird directions, so uh, I actually like the design here of the new one because it's actually shorter, kind of up and down, uh, plus the cable now comes out of the side of the rear dash cam as well. 
Now, obviously, it's now kind of this uh, barrel style dash cam, which allows you to actually rotate it uh, in 360 degrees and point it whatever direction that you want. So you do have a little bit more flexibility here uh, and the angle that you mount as well, in addition to the fact that it's shorter and the cable comes out the side. Next, the A229 also offers voice announcements to give you status updates on the dash cam. Recording, two channels started. Parking recording started. And then finally, the A229 also offers buffered parking recording. The previous generation A129 Plus could not record before the moment of impact, uh, only after somebody hits your car. Now with the A229, if you opt for this dash cam, this one is able to record before, during, and after any impacts or motion detected around your car. Next, let's move on and take a look at video quality. The A229 relies on the Sony Starvis IMX335, uh, which is a very popular image sensor. It's used in a ton of different dash cams these days. Uh, it offers good details, good color, as well as crisp and clear video. Uh, now, when it comes to capturing license plates, in your typical situations, it should do a good job. Though I do find that when the light starts to drop, you're gonna start to get longer exposure and longer shutter speed, so detail can be harder to freeze frame, but this is gonna be typical for dash cams. Then when it comes to nighttime video, the dash cam is going to allow you to capture what's going on around you. The Sony Starvis sensors are traditionally pretty good at this. Now, due to the lower light, again, you're going to be getting more motion blur. Not to mention dynamic range gets more extreme, so it's going to be much harder to freeze frame license plates. But again, this is going to be very normal here. Uh, we see this with pretty much every dash cam. Now, one of the toughest situations for any dash cam is driving around on back roads with no street lights. Uh, and in this situation, your headlights are really going to be the primary source of light. And taking a look at sample footage in this kind of situation, I do notice that the video does start to get grainy. I wouldn't say this video looks amazing, but it is still sufficient. Uh, now, on the other hand, if you're driving around and there are some more street lights around, such as in parking lots, for example, uh, this is when the video quality does get noticeably better. And so like with any camera really, uh, having light available for the camera to record definitely does make a difference. Now if you've got tint on your rear window, it does make it harder for the rear dash cam, but regardless I found it's still able to record what goes on back there. Now we don't have headlights pointing out the back of the car, so if you're driving around on a super dark road, things are definitely going to be dark here. And so as always, I think it's good to have realistic expectations. If you're driving on a road that does have some street lights on it, I do notice that they do make a big difference. And so, yes, overall, you're going to be able to record uh, what's going on around you, which is ultimately the point. Now, taking a closer look at the video quality here from the rear camera, uh, like the front camera, it also records at 2K, 1440p. And it relies on the same Sony Starvis IMX335 image sensor. That said, the rear camera does have a slightly smaller aperture, uh, so it does let in a little bit less light. Plus, it does record at a slightly lower bit rate than the front camera, so it does capture a less detail than the front camera does. And you'll also see this reflected in the slightly smaller file sizes for the rear camera footage. Uh, so overall, the quality is not going to be quite as good as the front camera, but it's still very nice regardless, and definitely better uh, than a rear 1080p dash cam. And personally, I like having higher resolution options for both the front and the rear dash cam. And I say this because despite the fact that the majority of what you're going to want to record is going to be up ahead of you, sometimes important details that you're going to want to capture are going to happen back behind you. And this can be especially true if you live in an area where cars don't have front license plates. If something happens up ahead of you and a car drives past you, well, your only option to capture the rear plate is going to be with the rear dash cam and having a higher resolution rear dash cam can be beneficial. Now, when it comes to maximizing the video quality, I like running the dash cam in the maximum bitrate option. And I found that when I'm recording this way, uh, even if there's a lot of movement and things changing, I'm still able to make out details like license plates. Now that said, regardless of settings, there's still going to be some situations where you're not going to be able to capture plates. Uh, but again, this is totally normal too. Regardless though, overall, I'm liking the video footage that's coming out of the A229. Now one annoyance that I'm finding from the dash cam's two different video files for front and rear, sometimes those two files can be slightly out of sync. And so when you're looking at the uh, files on the memory card, you'll notice that the timestamps on the file names don't always match. Uh, sometimes the front dash cam is going to be earlier, uh, sometimes the rear dash cam is earlier. Additionally, when you then go to try and sync the front and rear dash cam footage, they may start at slightly different times. And so you are going to have to do some legwork to ensure that the two videos are synced perfectly. Uh, again, this is true for a lot of different dash cams, but I definitely found it to be true here uh, with the A229 as well, maybe a little bit more so than with some other dash cams. Next, moving on to parking recording. Uh, this is going to allow you to record everything going on around your car when you're gone. Uh, it records when you're leaving your car, uh, when you come back, and any important events in between. Now, in order to enable the parking recording, you're going to want to pick up the optional HK4 hardwire cable. 
and I'll link to the cable that you need down in the video description. And then you're gonna wanna hook it up to either your car battery or to a dedicated dash cam battery pack. Uh, I've been doing all my testing with the Cell Link Neo battery pack. And then once you've got it all set up, there's gonna be three different parking modes available. Now the first option is gonna be the low bitrate option. This is basically gonna do continuous recording the whole time when you're parked, regardless of what's going on around your car. This is gonna record both video and audio, and in order to save memory card space, it's gonna be recording at a reduced bit rate at a reduced video quality level. And this is a popular option just to ensure that the dash cam records everything that happens while you're gone. Now the second option is gonna be time-lapse recording, and this is essentially gonna create a, a time-lapse video that records while you're parked. In the dash cam, you can choose the frame rate and how many frames are recorded every second, and then while you're parked, it's gonna record a continuous time-lapse the whole time out of both the front and rear dash cams. Uh, this is gonna record video only, uh, but no audio, unlike the low bitrate option. And then finally, the third option is gonna be the auto event detection. Uh, this is my favorite option. It's basically gonna give you buffered impact and motion detection. The idea here is instead of recording anything, it's gonna wait for motion or impact to your car, uh, and then when an event happens, it's gonna record and save just that clip. Now, what's different here about the A229 and better than many other dash cams is that it offers buffered parking recording, meaning it's able to record uh, not only when an event happens, but also 10 seconds before that event. So it records before, during, and after any important events, such as a hit and run. And then in the dash cam, you do have options to configure the sensitivity of the dash cam itself, but I like this option just to have the dash cam dial in and record any specific events that happen. Uh, now, next time you get back in your car, there is no voice announcement letting you know that maybe some impacts were detected or motion was detected. Uh, and so it is gonna be up to you to then go back and just pull the memory card or pull up the app uh, and take a look at any recorded footage in case you notice something happened to your car and you wanna see what happened. Now, speaking of voice announcements though, one of the nice features here, the A229, is that it does now have uh, voice announcements available. And this can be nice to confirm when the dash cam starts or stops recording, for example. Parking recording started. Recording, two channels started. You can also use it to confirm uh, when video files are protected. Video protected. Plus, it also lets you know about memory card errors, such as if you forgot to put a memory card back in your dash cam. Please insert a memory card. Now, in the dash cam, you do have the ability to turn these voice announcements on or off, uh, which can be very handy. Uh, personally, I'd like to see a third option available strictly for uh, error notifications. So let's say, for example, uh, I don't want the dash cam to talk every time I start up or shut down my car, but I do still want to know in case there's like an important error that happens, say uh, one of the dash cams failed or got disconnected or the memory card failed or I forgot to put a memory card back in the car or in the uh, dash cam, I really want to know that kind of stuff. And so I'd love to see uh, error notifications or somebody hit my car while I was parked, that kind of stuff, but still have a silent startup otherwise that doesn't bother me every time I'm in and out of the car. So I'd love to see that uh, available as, say, a third option in the dash cam. And speaking of the memory card, uh, the A229 supports up to a 256 gig memory card. Uh, now, unlike some other dash cams, there is no memory card that's included in the box when you purchase the A229. That said, most of the time it's a really tiny memory card anyway, so you're going to want to go and purchase a separate larger card to make sure that you can record for hours and hours. Uh, I sometimes keep the smaller one as like a backup or something. Uh, but either way, when it comes to memory cards, the A229 is pretty particular about the choice of cards. And if you go take a look at VFO's website, they actually have a list of recommended memory cards to use with your A229. Typically, they're going to be recommending the special endurance cards that are designed for dash cam usage. And down in the video description, I'll link to both this page as well as the memory card uh, that I use in my A229. Next, let's take a quick look at Wi-Fi. Uh, now, the A229 supports both 2.4 and the faster 5 GHz Wi-Fi. You basically turn Wi-Fi on on the dash cam and then you can connect to it uh, using the VFO app on your phone for both Android or iOS. And then using your phone, you can do things like more easily change settings on the dash cam uh, or view and download any saved video that you recorded while you were driving. Now, when it comes to changing settings in the dash cam, you can do most of the stuff uh, directly from the dash cam screen itself. But one of the main benefits I found of using the phone is setting the date and time uh, in the dash cam. Instead of having to go in and like manually choose the hours and minutes and all that kind of stuff in the dash cam, uh, you can just use the app to directly sync the time of the dash cam with your phone's time. Additionally, when you're first getting the system installed, uh, it's pretty straightforward to use the screen on the back of the front dash cam uh, to get the front dash cam's lens aimed. But when you're installing the rear dash cam, I found it to be much easier to have your phone with you and just look at your phone while you're getting the rear dash cam aimed on your rear window. 
Then as for the 5 GHz Wi-Fi option, BFO has started adding this to a lot of their newer dash cams over the past couple years. And the main benefit here is going to be faster file transfers, which is especially nice in case of an accident, for example, and uh, you need to view and download that footage to your phone and then send it over to police or insurance. Uh, it's just going to be much quicker to download those pretty big video files uh, to your phone. And so as far as the A229, I think that overall, it's a pretty good dash cam. I think that it offers good video quality and it has a nice feature set. The dash cam is physically larger than some other dash cams, though I don't necessarily notice it when I have it tucked behind my rearview mirror, for example. I also think that it's a little pricey, uh, but that does come with the territory for some of the added features over some of the older dash cams like the A129 Plus Duo. Overall, though, I think it's a well-rounded, solid dash cam. It doesn't have a bunch of crazy fancy bells and whistles, but it does a good job at the key features that you need to record both when you're driving and when you're parked. If you'd like to pick one up, I'll have it linked down in the video description, uh, along with some of the recommended accessories that you can pick up uh, with the A229 as well. And so if you're looking for a good front and rear dash cam, I think that the A229 Duo is a solid choice. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing great, and I'll see you in the next video.